Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving. I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Hi, God Squad kids and King's kids. And can I say my little chickadees? I'm so glad you're here with us. So we've got a word from God today, right from his word, the Bible. Would you go with me? Let's pray to him. Dear God, you're amazing, and you've given us your word. It's true, and you want to teach us. So, Lord, please fill all of us today with you. Teach us, and may we have a heart, Lord God, that hungers and thirsts after you. We pray these things, Lord, in the precious name of your son, Jesus, and all God's kids said, Amen. Amen. A day of rejoicing. That's what it was. It was Palm Sunday, and the people were so excited. This day had been told about hundreds of years before Jesus came into Jerusalem, riding on the back of a donkey. In fact, God told Isaiah, and Isaiah spoke it, and it's written down for us in Zechariah 9.9. And here's his words. He says, Rejoice! Shout in triumph, O people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, yet he's humble, riding on a donkey, on a donkey's colt, a day of rejoicing. It wasn't a trouble-free land then. The Romans were so mean to God's people, harsh, but they were rejoicing. Boys and girls, we're living through coronavirus now, and it's harsh, isn't it? I've talked to some of you, and it's lonely for some of you. It's hard being separated from people we love. Won't it be a day of rejoicing when we get back together? But until we do, let me encourage you. Find someone in your family and tell them things you can be rejoicing about today. There are things, even though it's hard, so that day, they were rejoicing. But some of those people, some of them believed that Jesus was coming into Jerusalem to be their king. They knew he had done all sorts of miracles, healing people. The blind could see, the deaf could hear. Oh, how they wanted that in their king. They liked that part. They were happy. As he rode into Jerusalem, the people were so happy that some of them, they took their outer garments and they laid them in the road that the donkey that Jesus was sitting on could walk on. And they cut palm branches off trees and they waved them and they burst out in song to Jesus, the King of Kings. They sang, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And they waved those palm branches. And on this Palm Sunday, Jesus was riding into Jerusalem. He was coming as a peaceful king. His disciples, they were still hopeful that Jesus would be on an earthly throne and rescue them from those mean and harsh Romans. But this is not why Jesus came, right? Jesus came to rescue people from their sins. Not all of those people in that week were rejoicing with Jesus or rejoicing because of him. Some were angry. Some were jealous that so many people gave him attention. And some wanted all the people to follow the rules that they made up, not the rules God had for us. And those people were in the temple. So the day after the day after rejoicing, Jesus and his disciples walked down the streets of Jerusalem, not headed for the palace and the king, but rather for, for the house of God. They went to the house of God, the temple. And it was strange because they heard all sorts of noises coming from that temple. They heard the bah, the sheep, and the moo of the cattle. 
and the coo coo of the caged birds. And they smelled the stink and they heard men yelling, come buy my animals for your sacrifices. Oof. And when Jesus entered the court of the temple and he saw and he heard the money changers cheating the people and he saw that there was no one there to help them, ooh, he was not happy. He glared at those people. The confusion, the yelling, the stink, the cheating. And then without warning, the Bible says, he grabbed a cord from the heavy curtain that hung down. He wrapped it around his hand. He stormed to the center of the court. And with his strong free hand, he turned over those tables that had money on them. And money went flying all over. And the merchant scrambled to pick up those coins. And with that cord, that rope, Jesus herded the animals out of the temple. And he flung the cages open and let those birds fly free. And the disciples, along with all those other people, they couldn't believe what they were seeing and hearing. The temple leaders began shouting at Jesus demanding that he stop it and telling him, you have no right to do what you're doing. You can't come in here and disrupt our business. Jesus yelled back at them and he said, this is my father's house. It's a house of prayer. You've made it a place to cheat people, good people. You've made it a temple, a den of thieves. Hmm. The disciples had never seen Jesus so angry. They could see how much he hated sin, disobedience, dishonor to his father, dishonesty, greed, and cheating. Today, earlier, you saw our skit with Rihanna about sin, about the wrong things we do, things that hurt God and hurt people and hurt us. Whenever we forget about God and we do life our way instead of finding out what pleases God and doing life his way, his word says that's evil in his sight. Jesus hates sin. It's so destructive. And yet he doesn't want us to be confused because he does not hate us. No matter what we've done, no matter where we've been, he doesn't hate us. He loves us. In fact, his word tells us that he loves us so much, right? That he himself paid for all of our sins by going to the cross and giving his life on that cross. That we're going to learn about next week. Just before Easter, when he was nailed to the cross for, for you and me, he did it out of his very great love for us. And so, boys and girls, our heart's been touched with the Word of God. It's a living Word. It changes us. It's life to us. And so those of you who would want to, would you go with me to God right now? Let's tell Him. Let's ask Him. Let's praise Him. Lord God, you so loved us that you gave your one and only Son, Jesus, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. Lord God, we're those people who have heard you, who have heard your word and dare to believe you. It is the belief in you, Lord God, that you say saves us. You're God who can protect us, provide for us. You're our savior. And you who started a good work in us, you're gonna be faithful to complete it. So Lord, we come to you and we admit We've not done life your way, not perfectly. We've done life our way. We've broken your heart with the things that we've said or done, taken that don't belong to us things. Lord God, maybe even times we've disbelieved you. But you're a faithful God and you promise us if we come to you and we admit these things, you're faithful to forgive us. Oh Lord God, blessed be your name. We sing to you, Lord God, in our hearts, and we want to walk in obedience, and we ask you for your help to do that. Blessed be your name, and we pray it in the name of your Son, the name above all names. And all of God's kids said, Amen.
thanking him. Thanking you for being here today. Hopefully you'll join us next week too. I love and miss you. We're praying for a day we can get back together. But don't forget about him, boys and girls. Stay really close to him. Stay in your word. Keep on keeping on. I'll see you real soon. Love you so much. Bye-bye.